let's look at really the genetic model behind the development of colon cancer. In a patient who has sporadic colon cancer, and like I mentioned before, this means no personal risk factors or other comorbidities that are associated with colon cancer, and no family members that have colon cancer. What happens in those patients? Well, at birth, they're born with two non-mutated uh, copies of a gene, and they develop over their lifetime a hit to their genes. And basically by a hit, I mean a mutation that happens in their genetic codes. Now they have one mutation of one copy in a gene and one non-mutated copy of a gene. These patients require a second hit, a second mutation to happen because they need both of these cancer protecting genes to be mutated. And then when they have two mutations in each copy of a gene, cancer can develop. Now we could understand why in a patient with inherited colon cancer, their risk could be so much higher for development colon cancer. And that's because they are actually born with a mutation in one copy of the genes, and this is at birth. So as you can imagine, over their lifetime, if another mutation happens to this other gene, which certainly is much easier than having a mutation happen to both genes, their risk then of developing cancer is that much higher of someone who has sporadic colon cancer. So comparing sporadic colon cancer in patients to those who have hereditary colon cancer, these patients are obviously then at a risk, a much higher risk of developing cancer, but developing it at a much younger age. Generally, it's less than the age of 50, and because of their increased risk, they actually can get multiple primary cancers, including not just one, but more than one colon cancer, but also other colon cancers involving other organs in the body.